Part 5, Section 2, Chapter 1 of Short History of the Christian Church by John Fletcher Hurst. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 2, The National Period, 1783 to 1892. Chapter 1, The Church at the Founding of the Republic. The contrast between the church in the Old World and in the New, during the 186 years of the colonial period, was marked. The controversies of Protestantism on the continent, especially in Germany, had a demoralizing effect. The struggle between the Lutherans and the Reformed had thrown the spiritual life into the background, and had given way to the incoming of rationalism from England and France, and thus made the growth of a native German skepticism a lamentable fact. In England, the Wesleyan revival was the only powerful salutary force against the alarming deism. The religious life in America, while it was always more or less disturbed by European impulses, had grown. Now and then there was an interruption. There were abnormal tendencies, such as might be expected in a land where the conditions were new. But the general life had been progressive and salutary. The theological activity, the prevalence of revivals, the building of churches, and the evangelistic spirit had produced a strong and aggressive type of ecclesiastical life. The colonial founders of the American church builded wisely, and made the best possible use of the materials at their command. There was a general spiritual decline in the religious life of the church from about 1765 until the end of the 18th century. The absorbing topic was the struggle for national independence. All spiritual interests languished. When once the revolution commenced, it became the passion of the people until it was concluded. The clergy, for the most part, were intensely patriotic. In their election day and other sermons, they discussed the political situation with the utmost freedom, and used every means to deepen the feeling of resistance to England. They applied moral and religious principles to the needs of the time, and this educating influence was the secret of that moral energy which sustained the Republic in its material weakness against superior numbers and discipline. But this very zeal worked disastrously for a time against the churches. Many of the clergy entered the army as soldiers or as chaplains, and thus a large number of congregations were without pastoral care and were broken up. Some of the churches were converted into hospitals, others into stables, and others were burned. Only nine of the nineteen churches in New York City were fit for worship when the war was over. Dr. Francis L. Hawkes says that Virginia, where the Episcopal Church was the established religion, quote, came out of the war with a large number of her churches destroyed, with twenty-three of her ninety-five parishes extinct or forsaken, and of the remaining seventy-two, thirty-four were destitute of ministerial services, while of her ninety-one clergymen, twenty-eight only remained who had lived through the storm. End quote. It is impossible to describe the desolation which swept over the churches as a result of the terrible revolutionary struggle. Many educational institutions were also suspended. Money which would have flowed into spiritual channels was turned into the scanty treasury of the colonies for Washington's army. The peaceful Quakers and Mennonites of Pennsylvania forgot their usual attitude and eagerly enlisted in the army. When peace came, a new ecclesiastical life needed to be built up. At no time in the history of the American church was the condition so serious. It was a question, how would Christian people act with the boon of a nation in their hands? Until the beginning of the nineteenth century, it was a doubt whether the national independence would prove a spiritual blessing or a curse. The numerical strength of the church at the beginning of the national period was about as follows. Episcopalians, ministers 250, churches 300. Baptists, ministers 350, 
churches 380 congregationalists ministers 575 churches 700 presbyterians ministers 140 churches 300 lutherans ministers 25 churches 60 german reformed ministers 25 churches 60 reformed dutch ministers 25 churches 60 methodists ministers 24 churches 11 associate ministers 13 churches 20 moravians ministers 12 churches 8 roman catholics ministers 26 churches 52 total ministers 1465 churches 1951 to show the weakened condition of the ecclesiastical bodies after the war we give here the statistics of the clergy in new york city in 1793 out of a population of 40,000, there were 22 ministers, Episcopal 4, Dutch 3, Methodist 3, German Calvinists 1, Lutheran 1, Associate Congregationalist 1, Independents 1, Baptist 1, Roman Catholic 1, Jews 1, Scotch Presbyterian 1, Presbyterian 3. There was a decided tendency in several of these bodies to divide on questions of doctrine and polity. It seems to have been a time when the spirit of national independence invaded the ecclesiastical pale. The air was filled with rumors of division. Many of the churches did suffer serious schisms at this time, which have not yet been healed. End of chapter 1